Hello and welcome to a tutorial. This tutorial is just for a nether log and wood farm. So how this farm works? Well, what we have down here is two deployers. This one's deploying bone meal. This one is deploying uh, wart fungus. We can make this a little bit more efficient by having extra stage in here. So there's a chest that holds in the uh, bone meal afterwards, but it doesn't really matter. This is fully automatic, except if you're playing on a server, when you log back in, you may need to re bone mill this bit of, uh, it will be never rack, and you need to re bone mill it to turn it to warp nylium. So how it works, this one deploys a warped, um, a, one of the warped funguses on this block, this one then bone mills it, and then this contraption is attached to a mechanical bearing which spins round and it will cut it down. When it gets cut down, the whole tree, all parts of it, gets sorted in this barrel. And then afterwards, this barrel is connected to this portable storage interface. So when this lines up with this portable storage interface, it will connect and transfer, transfer all the items from this barrel into this chest. Once that's done, only the, only the warped warp blocks will go out of this chest through the smart chute into a hopper which then goes into a composter which turns this warped um this warped warp block into bone mill which then supplies our bone mill um deployer so it's fully automatic if you have botany plots at the moment the only bit that's not fully automatic is the warped fungus you will need to keep supplying warped fungus into this box you can fix this with botany plots i'll show you how in a minute so how this is all works is we're going to have to connect all of these up to the same device. So I can, as you can see, I've got one gearbox here and I've also got another gearbox here. So this one is my vertical one. And this one is just my normal gearbox. These two are next to each other. So they connect these two blowers together. And then this one comes down into another gearbox. This connects to this gearbox here which is then connected to another um, vertical gearbox which goes into the mechanical bearing. So you will need kinetic energy from that. For this I'll be demonstrating using a creative motor, however you want your kinetic energy to come in this way. So this gearbox goes straight to the mechanical bearing and then we have one, two, three shafts which connects to a vertical gearbox which has a shaft above it which connects to a, another um, vertical gearbox which connects to a um, horizontal gearbox and then two R2 um, deployers here. On the actual spinning part of it, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have six radial chassis. At the top, you need to put a bit of glue onto that face there and stick a portal storage device facing the same direction as the saw. And on the bottom, we're going to have two linear chassis with a saw and a barrel. Both of these are glued on as well. When you first connect it, it will automatically start it. So if let's just chuck my, here we go. Watch it in action. And as you can see, as it spins, you have to be really, really careful because as it spins round, there it goes, it's connecting. It looks a bit dodgy, but it is still connecting. As you can hear it all being turned to bone mill. You might want to put a few stacks in here to begin with to get the whole process going. But once you've done that a few times, it will be good as gold. But as you can see, there's a few issues, because when this spins, you can see that it spins through the deployer, which is not very good if we then stop it halfway through, because it will then connect to the deployer and destroy the whole system. So if you're wanting to stop it, or you're going to be deloading it, I recommend, once it's round to this part here, with an empty hand, clicking that bearing, and it will stop it like so. As you can see, sometimes it can cause an issues here, so we just need to bone mill it. You might be able to fix it by getting another piece, another deployer, a little bit lower down, and connecting it to this block. I might experiment a little bit with that to see if it fixes any issues. But it's when the tree's up for a while, is when it causes it to go back to the warp block. But, this is the never warp farm, the not the warp farm, sorry, the crimson uh, wood farm, and the warped stem farm. So, because you can not only use this for the warp stem, you can use it for the other type as well, as I'll demonstrate in a second. The only thing you have to do is change what your filter is and change this round here. So once this spins round, um, 
I will, I'm actually going to just quickly destroy that and destroy this for now. Let's chop down one last tree, let it unload its storage, and then we'll set it up for the crimson. So I've just stopped it, and as you can see, in that very, very short period of time, we've got 25 warp stem and some stream light. You can also have it so we do save some of this um, warp, warp block if you really want to, but you don't need to. So now when we're changing it over, we're going to be using crimson nylon instead, and you're going to want to have as a filter in here, something slightly different. We're also going to want the um, the right mushroom as well as fungus, isn't it? We're going to want to have a crimson fungus. So let me just re put down the deployers. That one's got bone meal in it already. And this one instead, we're just going to have some crimson fungus instead. So do that. And then we also want to replace these with these blocks here. Ooh, why is it frozen? Is it because I replaced that while it was in the air? No, something's wrong. The whole contraption is just frozen. Oh, I've deleted a block by accident. I'll go fix that in a second. As you can see, it still works with these crimson stem, and now let's reactivate our chopping technique. As you can see, it's connecting up. So this time, we're going to need to put one of these nether wart blocks, and this is going to be our filter instead. So this is what we want to do if we're using crimson, but if we're using wart, then we want the wart. So that filter changes depending on what trees we're chopping down. As you'll see in a second, it's being transferred over. Ideally, if you're doing this, what you want is to have one or two ways of connecting it so it can um, make a faster connection, um, potentially using it like a funnel just so it's not standing longer. Because the longer this bit here is stationary, the, the more likely that this underneath here is going to be never rack instead of this crimson nylon. As you can see, it's now never rack. So sometimes you have to will have to come along just with a little bit of bone meal and to uh, top it back up again. But normally you don't have to worry about it too much, all depending on how your connection is up here and how fast you're transferring items. Now then, if you want to make it fully automatic, you need to have botany pots, and you're going to want to have a hopping, hopping botany pot. But this hopping botany pot does not matter the colour, colour is just aesthetics. We're going to put it on top of this chest here, and inside this chest we're going to put some crimson nylon. We're then also going to want to have one of these crimson funguses and inside we are going to chuck it on top. So now it's going to naturally grow and it's going to naturally plant. That's really weird, that block here should have got destroyed as well, don't know why I didn't. But this is, but we've already got 30 logs over that short period of time. That short period of time is literally being less than 30 seconds. So you can leave this running and it works really, really well. Um, you don't really want to have too many trees going, you just want like the one because, like I said, over time it will work quite well. These trees seem to be growing a lot longer, a lot taller than the, um, than the wart stems. But yeah, this is my automatic never wood farm. I hope you like it and um, I hope you find it really useful because, well, I haven't actually seen anyone make one of these before um, on YouTube. I have looked a little bit, not too extensively, but I made this and I think it was really, really useful. I did include it in another video earlier, but I tried to uh, make it a little bit more simpler. Um, I mean, it's not the prettiest thing, but it is quite efficient. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. -bye.